What up guys, Nick at Moonshot Harley Davidson here. We built a 135 inch Devil Runner kit for Mr. Lee Hartley, and we're gonna talk about what we did for him. <laughs> Lee, tell me about what you wanted me to do for the bike. Well, I initially came to you guys um, not really knowing what I wanted to do. Initially, we talked about a 131, because um, I had I had a 124 in it, and it was a stump puller, but um, like MVO says, it, it just wasn't enough, you know? So I came to these guys, and I, I just wanted to build a bike that kind of did everything great, you know? If I wanted to, you know, lay it down and kick some butt, I could do that, but if I wanted to take it across country, you know, it, it's good for that too, so. Absolutely. Just wanted to do, like an all-around bike, you know, it, just good at everything. Yep. So what we did for him was our 135 cubic inch motor kit. We used, of course, Dark Horse's flywheel, our piston and cylinder kit, the CPX pistons, with our Frankenstein Monster Series heads. And of course, we blacked it all out. It's hard not to do it on here, and the bike's already blacked out. It makes it look beautiful. And then we topped it off with the only pipe out there, really, the Thunder header. Come on now. And then the Behringer brakes with the carbon fiber wheels. Lee has not rode the bike yet. I'm trying to push him to ride it tonight, but they're gonna be leaving about 11 o'clock tonight to head back to Wyoming. So I'm sure they're gonna get some sleep and head out there too, but it's been a long time coming. Yeah. We've been working on this for what, about a year now? Yeah, it's been about a year process. I yeah. was just telling Randy that, um, you know, it's, I, I told Nick from the start, just be patient with me, man. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I knew I wanted to do this, but you know, obviously there's some bucks involved and a lot of logistics. So it, uh, you know, it worked out. I, yep. I'm, I'm super happy. I haven't even rode it and I'm, I'm just stoked, you know? Yep came out great. He's like, hey, Nick, I want to I wanna have a bike that's going to last a long time and I can travel on. I'm like, the 135 is it. That's something you can go all over the place. And if I had the, uh, the, ch the coin for it, I would do a 135 as well. But I'm still stuck in the 128 levels. It'd be pretty nice. So on this engine here, we use Dark Horse Racing four and a half inch flywheel. This flywheel right here, the reason why we use it is the strongest one we can get. It starts life as an SNS product. We then break it back down and then put our Carrillo lightning rod on it. So the reason why we run those cylinders, it's the strongest cylinder we can get our hands on. And it's gonna be something that's gonna last a long time and stay very round and true for us. And then we pair that with, of course, our Monster Series 2.5 heads. On this setup here, we ran a stainless valve. It's still a two and a half millimeter over valve, but we ran the stainless, a little more cost effective, still a great product on the top. We use Gorilla rocker shafts from Feeling on top. The reason why we run those is that they are so strong, they're not gonna gall and ever uh, leave material on the rocker shaft, so it allows us to have the strongest unit on top if the motor ever did get hot. For taking care of the hot side of it, we ran a Jim's Force Flow fan on the side of this, and then I'd hardly Harley Screaming Eagle uh, oil cooler, fan assisted oil cooler that help keep the temps down for us, help it maintain it. He is in Wyoming where it's naturally a little hot, where it's, you know, he starts life at 7,000 feet. We're down here, we're about 800 feet. So this bike is gonna run, you know, naturally a little warmer where he's at. So we wanted to attack every angle we could to keep this thing from running warm. We are running our intake from Frankenstein on here, which is the billet 64 millimeter square port manifold on here. It is top tier. If anybody knows, you know, machine work, Frankenstein is top tier. There's nobody better than them. We are using a Harley Screaming Eagle 64 millimeter throttle body and then pairing it with a SNS Stealth as well. This will allow us to get as much airflow as we can and maintain a really nice positive air charge in the system. So after we got the motor set in stone, Lee was like, hey, what can we do now to stop the bike? So we went to our go-to here, which is the radial mount Behringer. We use the Behringer caliper with the larger pistons and then we run the 320 millimeter rotor the reason why we run this brake setup is that when you apply the brake, the outer ring of the rotor actually bottoms out on the inner ring of the rotor, the rotor itself. And it allows the button to stay 
and last a long time. It allows the rotor to be stay true and not warp. Other manufacturers will, after a lot of braking and heat, the rotor, the rotor will warp. And so this helps prolong the life of the rotor. We paired this front end setup with, of course, the BST wheels. That is probably the biggest upgrade you can ever put on your machine, but it's something that you will feel immediately. Just by sitting the bike up, standing it up here, you can feel how light the brake is. And then when you're out on the road, it is absolutely insane. The way that it hugs the ground, the way that the wheels are um, just so light when you go to stop, the bike just is so much more nimble. It feels like a sport bike. I know it will never be like a sport bike because it's an 850 pound machine, but um, it's something you can help in attack all the centrifugal weight and all this rotating mass underneath the bike, which is fantastic. Uh, we also ran Olin's suspension up front. This is the NYX 22 kit. The reason why we went with this, because of course it's Olin's, it's top tier, it's hard to beat. We wanted some type of adjustment on here. So Jordan, he actually drilled the nacelle right here. If Randy can zoom in and see, we drilled on the nacelle to be able to get to the adjustment. So if he's out there and he wants to get any more compression, any more rebound on the suspension, it's an easy access to get. And then out back, we use Screaming Eagles Olin's piggyback reservoirs. These have a progressive spring in the back and allow for quick adjustment as well when he's on the road. Let's say he has his tour pack on, he's traveling, and he needs to add weight or add compression to the back of the bike or the back of the suspension. He can simply turn these knobs back here Righty tighty will be more compression, lefty will be softer. So if he's going, he say his girlfriend, wife's on the back is allowing him to adjust the suspension a little better for him. And now Lee's gonna do a giant burnout for us and ruin these brand new tires. No. <laughs> Seeing the dynograph for the first time. That last Tell like, me what you feel. That last like, that torque curve, I mean peak lasts 2000 RPMs. That is insane. That's, that's exactly what I wanted, you know? Yeah, from 3500 RPMs up, we're above 140 pounds of torque and it stays up there until about 6,000 RPM. And the horsepower never goes down. Mm -hmm. Like, if, if this bike could rev to 8,000, it would just keep on climbing. Mm -hmm, it probably would. That's insane. Yeah, this bike made 167 horsepower and 149 pounds of torque. It was, it is an absolute beast. Jordan did a good job. Thanks, Jordan. Well, Lee, I appreciate you. Thanks for no trusting me with your baby. You're welcome, man. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you for Thank everything, you. for putting up with me. Yeah. It's, it's not easy to do a build from 1,400 miles, but, but you guys make it easy, so thank you guys so thank much you. for everything, really. Appreciate it. Yeah. We'll see you guys later.